what a day for markets and Tesla stock. This one's a little bit harder to come to the bottom of. Was the Fed today bullish or bearish? I think people could have so many different interpretations of this. I will give you mine here in this video. And I think there's a reason why maybe markets sold off. And this may be correct. This may not be correct. I mean, if you look at financial media, if you look at something like a CNBC, they're going to say today was good. <laughs> And what we got from the Fed was good news. But when you look at the markets, this is the small caps, okay? Small caps ripped higher and then sold off back to the same level you were at when the report came out at 2 p.m. today. And after hours, you are up a third of 1%, so that looks good. But you did not hold the big gain that you had. And that wasn't fantastic. So I will go over specific things that I think the markets liked, things that the markets did not like in regards to Powell and what is coming next for our markets and for Tesla stock. Tomorrow is going to be another important day. You do have some data coming out tomorrow, but the big story will be around Apple earnings. Now, you do have big data coming out on Friday, and that could be part of why stocks sold off today. So Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Seriously, I feel like all opinions you know, uh, sh should be heard out with this one. Um, <laughs> because I, I don't think there's a clear right or wrong answer to what happened to markets today. So um, let's get into it. First things first with, I was bullish heading into today. And I think that was confirmed the overall thesis on why i was bullish is as followed the markets had gotten very pessimistic in terms of the amount of rate cuts that we're going to get and when we were going to get rate cuts the markets just a couple of months ago were expecting three rate cuts like a month ago two months ago you were expecting three rate cuts if not more than that today you're only expecting one and before the Fed meeting, you were actually only expecting the first cut December 18th of 2024, the last Fed meeting of this year, basically 2025. And there were a good chunk of investors that were a little cautious that the Fed may need to raise rates again. And by every metric possible on the conference call, Jerome Powell reaffirmed they do not need to raise rates again. Like, you would have to see the economy running super red hot. You would have to see wages running red hot. You would have to see inflationary pressures overall running red hot. Inflation break-evens moving higher. You would have to see inflation expectations moving higher to justify the Fed raising rates. Jerome Powell said very clearly he does not expect to need to raise rates again. He basically said the question now is, how long do we stay at this level of restrictiveness? Because Powell thinks we are restrictive. And he thinks there's signs of that. If you look at discretionary spending areas of the markets, there's definitely some weakness there. There's definitely a slowdown there. And Jerome Powell doesn't know. Okay, so there's a little uncertainty on when we're going to get rate cuts. Jerome Powell did not necessarily confirm we're going to get three rate cuts when he was asked that. He said, hey... I'm not into probabilities here. I don't know when we're going to get rate cuts. Um, but more or less, he did kind of forecast rate cuts still by the end of this year. I actually think if, if you want to get to the meat and bones of why I think stocks sold off, I think it was in regards to the multiple times Jerome Powell said an unexpected weakening in the economy or the labor market. Jerome Powell made it very clear. There's multiple pathways to getting rate cuts. One pathway is inflation continues to fall and we see more progress on inflation. The other way we get some rate cuts is if the economy weakens. And the other way we get rate cuts is if the labor market weakens. And he brought this up multiple times here in today's press conference. And as, as, as bad as some people would want to see the economy weaken, 
um, that's not good news for stocks. That would be bad for stocks. Even if the Fed is cutting rates, but the economy is is weak, right? Heading into a recession, markets would do very poorly. And that is a definitive fact, okay? Anytime you have recession fears or it looks like you're heading into recession, stocks do not like that. Although Powell did not sound super cautious on a, a potential recession or the economy, he, he did make it a point to say multiple times there could be a sudden weakness in the labor market and or the economy, and that could give um, the Fed a reason to start raising rates. He did cite last quarter's GDP numbers. GDP quarter over quarter came in lower than expected, and he did sort that to say, kind of point that out to say, you know, you're you're still seeing some downward pressure on economic activity. I do want to be very clear. Today was bullish, but I think those comments around the economy and around the labor market took the markets back a little bit because of how many times Powell referenced this. And one thing specifically that kind of, um, you know, caught my eye as well is the economy has been doing very strong. OK, it's been doing very well. It's, it's, it's been chugging along despite what some people have thought. Jerome Powell basically said in 2022, the Fed was not worried about the economy at all. They didn't care, essentially, what happened to the economy. And that's why the Fed forecasted some pain to get inflation down. Well, today, Jerome Powell said they're not just focused on inflation, that inflation has fallen a lot. They're also focused on the economy and the other part of their dual mandate, not just price stability, but also maximum employment and really just keeping the economy strong overall. So I think some investors took the comments that Powell made is, hey, you know, uh, maybe there is a chance the economy weakens from here. That's the only logical thing I can say to justify what happened after the conference. There's really nothing else that makes any sense because I was re I, I was bullish heading into the Fed mainly because markets were very pessimistic, right? Again, a lot of people were expecting maybe the Fed needs to raise rates and there was four or five different questions directly about maybe the Fed does need to raise rates again in 2024. Powell obviously shut that down and it looks like we're far off of that and that's why stocks initially did well, but just just that many questions about raising rates again really shows you just where markets, you know, head was at heading into um Powell today. So I do think uh, um, these things are really the only reason I can justify that stocks fell today. Because again, keep in mind 2022, where things were not necessarily terrible out there, but the presumption was the economy is going to head into a recession. And that's why stocks did poor in 2022. If you start to head into a recession or look like you're, you could head into a recession, uh, stocks are way too high for that. You're not priced for that at all. So I think the Fed with those recession comments did spook the markets a little bit. But when you net net all of this out, it's pretty dang bullish. The Fed gave us a dovish surprise today, not even including the quantitative uh, you know, tightening, slowing down instead of the Fed running off 60 billion a month in treasuries. Now they're only going to run off 25 billion a month in treasuries. That was five to 10 billion less than expected by, you know, different, different um, people had different estimates, but it was lower than most people's estimates. And that is also positive for bringing bond yields lower. And I think that's why, again, small cap stocks were the outperformers today, even here and after hours, up a third of 1%. I do think overall today was bullish for stocks. And I think over the next coming days, as long as nothing goes sideways, that will be reflected. Now, before we talk specifically Tesla stock, I do want to go over the data that we will have tomorrow and um, how that um, could affect Tesla. We will also have some earnings as well. I do want to point out, oh man, uh, this IWM trade was crazy today. So if any if any of you guys were in this, congratulations if you uh, um, took profits at the top. This thing went to $90, 90 cents a piece. 
I was up over $700, almost $800 on this at one point. Ended up closing the day down $100. <laughs> Just insane. I'll probably look to close this out tomorrow if we do have a good day. My expectation would be we do have a pretty good day, but you know, you win some, you lose some. In this case, you know, I, I, I held a little too long. And I guess we're just going to ride it out and see what happens down there. But there was a lot of opportunities for some crazy trades today. I will say that with, with the swings we had, pff, oh my gosh, there's probably some crazy trades you guys hit. Now, tomorrow morning, we will get challenger job cuts for the month of April, expecting 91,000. Not a huge deal either way that number comes out. Um, exports, imports, that could be important for some of your GDP metrics. Keep in mind the Atlanta Fed GDP Now Tracker is estimating GDP is at 3.3%, down from 3.9% that we just recently had tomorrow we will get the next gdp update um as you can see here thursday may 2nd that is because the export and import number um will affect the gdp like directly gross domestic product right exports imports directly affects that you will also get initial jobless claims coming out tomorrow expecting 212,000 non foreign productivity quarter over quarter preliminary numbers that can also affect gdp as well unit labor cost quarter over quarter also can affect um, GDP. You will get factory orders month over month, expecting this to come in at positive 1.8%. Last month was positive 1.4%. That comes out at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and some treasury auctions, but that is pretty much it. Now, on Friday, you will get your non farm payrolls and your unemployment rate. I think the markets to some degree are kind of bracing for a weaker non farms report. At least I kind of am after the Fed today and all of the references about, you know, an unexpected weakening in the labor market. Again, Powell made like five or six different references throughout the speech to that. And uh, maybe that means we miss coming Friday in the non-farm payroll number. Um, sometimes the Fed, basically most of the time, especially right before a Fed meeting, will get the data ahead of time. So it's it's very likely that Powell already knows what that non-farm number is going to be. And maybe that's why he was kind of ruling out a uh, rate hike and was more on the dovish side. Non-farm payrolls are expected 238000 um, last month you came in at 303,000. So you're going to get a revision there, probably downwards. And again, if you come in higher than like 120,000 jobs, that's, that's great. When expectations are 238,000, um, I think you're set up in a favorable way there as well. I mean, after all, the stronger the economy, the more jobs being added, you would think would be good for markets um, following what Powell said today. But a number coming in under 200,000 would probably be seen as good news as well. Now, the unemployment rate is expected to come in at about 3.8%. Jerome Powell made a very specific comment about if inflate, if unemployment were to go up a couple tenths of 1%, higher than 4%, it wouldn't really... Um, be too problematic like that's not a you know extreme weakening in the labor market as 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 per powell right you'd have to see something like four and a half percent perhaps or or maybe higher than that for the fed to really pay attention and say oh okay maybe we should be um cutting rates sooner rather than later now friday you will also get ism services pmi and i expect all of this data will be important for markets and likely give stocks quite a big um, move now tomorrow you have novo nordisk you have peloton moderna penn national gaming apa corporation conoco phillips cigna as well as wayfair tomorrow and after hours these are your bigger companies you have apple coinbase block DraftKings, cloudflare bill.com fortinet amgen booking holdings and expedia that will all report earnings and uh, apple is by far the most important company for the markets but also coinbase um, Block, Cloudflare, Fortinet, all these other guys are also important, especially to their sectors um, and can definitely give the markets um, some, I guess, fuel on the fire to move and to be um, volatile, especially Apple, though. There's signs that Apple's numbers are not going to come in great. Um, but Apple usually has a way to spin things and make things OK. So we'll see Apple sitting at about one hundred seventy dollars could be set up in a more optimal position to uh, maybe go up after earnings. But 
after all, we will have to wait and see. Now, assuming there's no disaster, assuming nothing goes terribly wrong, I think you're actually set up in a more positive way than not. Again, because Apple has already fallen a lot in 2024, at least has fallen a lot from all-time highs, you're probably better priced for bad earnings. The Fed was actually bullish today. Um, we don't have much for economic data that will be substantially important for markets unless some of those GDP metrics come out bad um, or really good. Then that's, you know, something to consider, but that's not my expectation. So I do think you're, you are set up in a positive way. And um, as long as Apple doesn't wet the bed, um, tomorrow could be a pretty good day. Now, I think Friday is a little bit more of a wild card as well with the data. I think you are set up in a favorable way there also because the unemployment rate um, is you know so low. You could even go up two tenths of 1% and you're only at 4%. I don't think the markets would, would freak out about that. Uh, maybe. I mean, what do I know anymore? This, this, this market is very crazy and... I would say irrational. Um, non farms expected at almost 240,000. I think there's room to come in lower there, and I think that can also um, be bullish. Uh, but again, we'll have to wait and see. I think with Tesla specifically, as I have said before, the stock has changed. It's it's not, in my opinion, this the same. I guess, stock that it was before. Obviously, it is, but I think the mentality. I think the um, overall narrative around Tesla has changed in a huge degree following Tesla's earnings. I think the markets are looking at Tesla as, hey, maybe this is a turnaround company. Maybe this is a company we want to be invested in. And I think that's powerful. And I, again, think that changed the overall um, narrative for Tesla. So although I am expecting a lot of volatility, I think things change for the better. And I don't think you're falling back to these super low levels. I even think 160 is probably unlikely unless we see a lot of downside in the markets. If, if we see a lot of downside in the markets, obviously that could happen. But I do think it is unlikely that Tesla sees any kind of substantial downside from here. I think if anything, over the last um, you know two days of selling, Yesterday, you were down 5.5%. Today, you're down 1.8%, including a tenth of 1% here and after hours. I actually think you're set up for maybe an end of the week rally for Tesla, maybe back into, you know, let's call it the high 180s. That could definitely be possible. And I think tomorrow, when markets open, you're going to have a re reaction that is probably bullish in markets also. Right. So, uh, so keep that in mind, and I do think inevitably we will get back to that 100-day um, moving average in the not-so-distant future. Tesla's MACD looks pretty dang positive. Um, you can see MACD is actually positive now, going from negative, what was this, negative 8, negative 9, to positive 0 0.71, and the signal line is sitting at negative 3.23. Um, and that has been trending upwards ever since hitting negative 6.3. So definitely looking good there as well. And if you look at the RSI, that is sitting at about 56. So you're back to a more neutral level. And I think that does set Tesla stock up for some upside. Now you are also, I should mention, sitting at this trend line. Now I don't move these trend lines. I Tesla is very unique of a stock in terms of technicals. It tends to follow technicals very well. So I don't move these lines at all. These lines have been the same as they were in the last video and the video and the video and the video before that. I don't change them. You could see here, look at this trend line. I mean, you were finding resistance here before. You fell down, you gapped down, you hit all the way down here into the 130s. You came back up, you gapped up above all of these trend lines. You found a little support here. Great, that did not hold yesterday. You fell under that. You found support here at this trend line. Great. If tomorrow you don't hold support or throughout the rest of this week, you fall to that 50-day moving average at about $175 per share. I think that will be a solid level of support. Under that, you have your 20-day moving average, and that's going to be another really big level of support around 166. I think the good news here is You've, you've broke above most of your resistance levels, and they have now started to turn into support levels, okay? And for an upside move, um, I think there's a lot less resistance 
as there was previously when Tesla was in the 140s. So I do think the path of least resistance at this point for Tesla is higher. And take a look at that here, even in after hours, Tesla stock is looking to break out into the green. Pretty dang impressive. And again, I do think ultimately Tesla stock comes back up and tests that 200 day moving average at about $220 per share. And throughout this year, I think things get a lot better for Tesla. So as I've said before, this is what I believe Tesla's meta moment. It's not going to be straight up. OK, there's there's a lot of other factors here. There's the Fed, there's the economy, there's inflation, there's earnings. All of these things affect Tesla. But I think Tesla itself has changed for the better. I think this is a different company psychologically when you're investing in it than it was for, you know, the prior year or or two even where Elon Musk and the Tesla team were really not providing clarity and earnings calls. They really weren't doing much to add to shareholder value. Just not a lot of positive, accretive things for shareholders. I think those days are over at this point. And I actually think if you don't have a position in Tesla, I still think Tesla at about $180, $180 per share or so is a very attractive buy. And I think it's actually smart if you waited until after earnings because the stock could have went to 100. The stock could have got re-rated down to 80. So don't beat yourself up now if you are someone that waited till after earnings to buy Tesla. I think actually getting the confirmation that we were correct, that this is essentially a new Tesla, uh, I I think was a very smart choice um, looking back, um, especially for anyone that has a nearer term outlook that isn't holding Tesla for like a 10 year time horizon. I, I actually think you made the right choice if you waited to buy Tesla after earnings, um, because on a risk to reward basis, things could have been very bad to the downside. Sure. Were they great to the upside? Of course, Tesla stocks up $40 from the 140 level, $42 from its low. That's great. And you were rewarded if you bought the, the stock, but you fall in so much in Tesla, there is still a lot of upside from here. And I think it's a lot easier to see that upside potential now in Tesla versus before. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.